let's start by looking at the data types in Java. All right, welcome back to the Java introduction for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at some data types. Now, as you can see, I have already filled our main class with some, well, things in here. I will go through and explain a little bit about data types and variables overall, and just to give you an idea what those are and basically what you can do with them. So first of all, what you will see is that there are different types of data. So there are numerical types, there are booleans, and then there are characters and strings. That's sort of the main bulk of the really primitive data types. And we're going to go through each of them. So the first one, and I've marked this as mainly used right with a comment here, because those are the sort of primitive data types that I see basically used a lot. And then there are ones that are only sometimes used, but that's totally fine. So first of all is an integer. And an integer is a whole number. This means that if you have a variable, you can store a certain value in it. And depending on what type of variable this is, the value that you can store in it changes. So for example, an integer or whole number can store anything between negative 2 billion and positive 2 billion. So I could put in anything between those numbers here and it would be stored in this integer. And then I could, for example, you know, I could add to this variable I could subtract from this variable and so on and so forth. So I could work with this number. This could, for example, represent the number of certain things in a list. This could represent an age or it could represent the number of cents in a bank account. So there's a lot of things that this could in theory represent. Same with, for example, the float. A floating point number is a number with a decimal point, as you can see. So this one, for example, here is 13.37. And we usually end this with an F, as you can see. So in this case, with the, the F here, as you can see, is actually strictly necessary to end this with an F, because otherwise, if I hover over this, you can see that we're going to say, hey, this is actually a double. And this is exactly what is being shown below here. Although here, I can put in an F because they are sort of interchangeable in one way, but not the other. Uh, you can also write in a D to note that this is a double. However, this is also done by default if you don't have anything written after it. Now, the difference between a float and a double is basically the precision that you have. So you have seven decimal point precision for the float and 15 for the actual double. The reason why that is the case is simply that they are, well, they are, have different sizes in sort of the back end. And the way that floating point numbers work is they're actually scientific notation. So this is actually being saved kind of like this. You might have seen something like that already. It was basically 1.412 times 10 to the 10. And that would then be 14,120. That's sort of how they are actually stored sort of in the computer itself. And the thing about it is that after seven numbers, basically, you get imprecisions. And that means that you get rounding errors. So floats and doubles usually, I wouldn't say have to be treated with caution. But if you are, if something has to be very, very accurate, you should definitely not use floats and doubles in that case, just keeping that in mind. And then there are things that are sometimes used. That's just how I called them. Of course, it always depends on what the project is and what you can do. But in in modern times, most of these are not used too much. So the bytes uh, are used for some other things more than just being represented as a number. So a byte is 8 bits and store numbers between negative 128 to 127. And this is, I call this a tiny number because of course, you know, it can only store smaller numbers or a smaller amount of numbers or a smaller range of numbers. And then there is the small number, which is a short. This ranges from negative 32,000 and a bit to plus 32,000. And then there's the long number, which can store, well, uh, quite, the, quite the crazy thing. So these are for really long and big numbers. Basically, you can use a long for that. Right, the next type of data are Booleans or also sort of logic types. 
Now they're actually fairly easy and straightforward. They can either store true or false. And that can also be represented with a one or a zero, one being true and zero being false. So we have this Boolean called grade videos here, which is equal to true, hopefully. And then the Boolean is this HTML is equal to false. And if you thought that that was true, well, I mean, that's probably, you know, hate to break it to you, but this is actually job. No, but in all seriousness, though, this is uh, fairly straightforward. Seriousness, though, this is uh, fairly straightforward thinking about it. So Booleans can either be true or false. And just with this zero or one logic here, you can actually build some insanely complex things. And those Booleans are going to be very, very important, you know, later down the line, sort of to control the flow of your program, so to speak, because we can, for example, check if something is true or if something is false. And if you can do that, then it opens up a lot of possibilities for you in terms of programming. Right, and sort of last but not least, we have characters and strings. And there is a sort of a difference. So the character called char here is a single character and is done with these single quotes right here. And this includes things like commas and dashes and spaces as well, right? So I can put in a space here, as you can see, and we're not getting any error. However, if I were to put in a second character here, you can see that this does not work because characters are single characters, right? So only one character can be in here, but it can be a plus, you know, a hashtag, even like some crazy things like this, this back tick or something like that. So anything you can basically put in here that is might be a character. And then those characters put together are a string. So a string is just a sequence of characters, so to speak, and they are done with the quotation marks. So quotation mark, then the string starts, and then the quotation mark at the end, and then the string sort of ends. And then sort of at the end here, I also wanted to mention the keyword null or the value null. So null is kind of a interesting concept to think about. The idea is null is not a zero. So if you have something that is null, that means it's empty and it has no value. So null sort of represents sort of nothingness when we really think about it. And this can also be very important to know. So null is something that you will definitely come across uh, a few more times when we're dealing with Java, uh, especially sort of in the intermediate steps that we're going to go through. But that would for now be it for the actual data types here. So right now we don't have anything that's happening yet. But we're going through sort of the basics, explaining, okay, what types of data can we save? And then basically these types of data, they make up everything almost that you know. So any game that you've ever played made up of these data types. That's pretty much it. Just represented in a very interesting way. And of course, it gets more complicated than this as well. However, the foundation here are always these very primitive data types and out of those you can build almost anything that you want so this is why these fundamentals are very important to understand and while we have not yet done anything with them we're going to go through those and we're going to see you know how you can manipulate some of these values and some of these variables how you can play with them and i believe that this is going to be a great great fun and great thing so that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would, of course, appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.